Coming up on the Jill Bennett Show, the federal government's ban on buying, selling, and transferring handguns is now in effect. Will it do anything to improve public safety? Join me after the noon news. Global News to 12. Good afternoon. I'm Safiya Parani. Premier designate David Eby says he'll focus on making the province a better place to live after he is sworn in as Premier in November. Global's Janet Brown reports. In his first 100 days as Premier, Eby says he wants to expand available and affordable housing, create safer communities, improve access to health care, and focus on climate change. He says this will require partnerships with all levels of government, including First Nations and service providers. We will deliver on those initiatives that I have outlined for you so that British Columbians have a very obvious choice when it comes to the ballot box of the next election, that the NDP is the party that listens and that delivers in a real way for you. EB now begins transitioning into government ahead of his swearing in as premier in the coming weeks. Janet Brown, Global News. A man is dead following a shooting last night in Langley. RCMP were called to 211B Street and 77th Avenue just after 11 p.m. A short while later, a Ford F-150 was found engulfed in flames near 232nd and 76th. Homicide investigators don't believe this was a random act. They're requesting anyone with information or dash cam footage to contact them. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in Surrey this morning to announce what he says is one of the strongest actions on gun violence in a generation. He says effective today, it's no longer legal to buy, sell or transfer a handgun in Canada. Let me share with you some statistics to illustrate why this is so important. The number of handguns in Canada has increased by 70% since 2010. Since 2011... Firearms-related homicides have gone up nearly 40%, and handguns were the most commonly used weapon. Meantime, Trudeau also taking time to pay tribute to Burnaby RCMP Constable Shailen Yang, who was murdered this week. Our hearts go out uh, to the family of uh, Constable Shailen Yang, and of course that means uh, her family, but also her larger family of RCMP uh, police and peace officers across the province and across the country who stand with her. No word yet on when her funeral will be held. A new poll suggests less than half of Canadians believe the opioid crisis is a major problem. Global's Daria Zargar has more. Research co-president Mario Kinsenko says concerns over the opioid epidemic remain stagnant in Canada. You know, a lot of Canadians in urban centres who know that this is happening, who maybe know somebody who was affected by the opioid crisis, um, but we don't see that type of situation in the rural areas. According to the federal government's website, from January to March this year, there was approximately 1,883 opioid-related deaths. That's about 21 Canadians dying per day. Frankly, I was expecting the numbers to be higher. You know, we've been talking about this. Uh, we know that there's a significantly high level of deaths, particularly um, in Metro Vancouver. Uh, but it's almost as if people are a little bit desensitized. It is really sad to say it that way. Dari Zargar, Global News. The House panel investigating the U.S. Capitol riot has formally issued a subpoena to former U.S. President Donald Trump. It came eight days after Liz Cheney and the committee voted unanimously to summon the ex-president. We must seek the testimony under oath of January 6th central player. In a letter to his lawyers, the panel demands Trump testify on or around November 14th and provide documents before then. Cheney and panel chair Benny Thompson wrote they recognize the subpoena to a former president is significant and historic, and they're not doing it lightly. It's unclear how Trump will respond. Sagar Magani, Washington. Elon Musk planning to dismiss most of the Twitter workers if he reaches the deal with the social platform. Nearly 75% of Twitter's 7,500 employees. That's how many workers Elon Musk plans to lay off if he buys Twitter, says the Washington Post. Twitter's been expected to eliminate some jobs regardless of the sale, but this many? Tech analyst Dan Ives of the investment firm Wedbush says it would free up some cash, and that would look good to investors who may want to get in on the deal. But he says a drastic reduction like this would likely set the company back years. Experts are already warning about data security and say harmful content and spam could overrun Twitter. I'm Rita Foley.
Global News Time 1204. Now the latest AM730 traffic. Over at the Golden Ears Bridge, have a problem vehicle at the south end of the Golden Ears Bridge. Southbound right lane is blocked. It has a flat tire and cleared a problem in Abbotsford. A collision off Highway 1 westbound west of Bradford Road from the right shoulder to westbound backups quickly easing off. Watch out for delays at the Massey Tunnel. Maintenance crews are working in the tunnel and southbound's backed up from south of the golf course. Northbound 99 backed up from Highway 17A. At Cal Tire, top rated Nicoan winter tires are on sale now. Save up to $75 instantly for a limited time. Visit CalTire.com for details. In the AM730 Traffic Center, I'm Kim Larson. Online bidding is quick and easy at Able Auctions. Do it in the comfort of your home. Check out upcoming auctions at ableauctions.ca. Global Sky Tracker weather showers for the afternoon. Highs to 11. Cloudy with clear breaks this evening. Lows of 6. Cloudy with showers tomorrow. Highs to 11. Lows of 5. And mainly sunny on Sunday. Highs to 11. Lows of 10. In U.S. Minster, 8 degrees right now. Mainly cloudy. Outside CKNW at Pacific Center in downtown Vancouver, 9 degrees. And now your CKNW Business News with Robert Levy. Well, good afternoon. It's Canadian retail sales to end the week. Exhibiting a little resilience in the Canadian consumer, but higher rates knowing to take their toll as we venture on into the fall. The summer recovery well noted though. Sales were up seven tenths of a percent in August, faring better than the stats can estimate with gains in about six of the 11 sectors for some mixed results, excluding automobiles. Those sales up seven tenths of a percent and then stripping out the volatility of gasoline. Prices just shy of a a full percentage point higher. All said, though, uh, the weakness expected to begin in the fall with the estimate for half a percent decline in September. And well aware of the debate this week will be whether the Bank of Canada goes all in or pulls back a little bit with a 50 or 75 basis point rate hike next Wednesday. CKW Business News for Bartek Fire Safety Systems. Get a free estimate at BartekFire.com. Global News Time, 1206. I'm Safiya Parani.